guys, I'm Heidi Hisrick. I'm here today with my teaching buddy Lucy, who just likes to join me for my lessons. And today I'm going to show you how to make origami DNA. I did not create this activity, full disclosure. I bought this from Origami Organelles, and if you wanna do it, then you or your teacher have to buy it from Origami Organelles to be able to make it. Um, but I made it and I really love it. I did make a handout to go along with it. Um, which you can get the handout from the drop down right under this video, the description. And that's for my students so that you guys can fill this in to help you better understand it and other students who might wanna try this. To do this activity, you're gonna need the papers from Origami Organelles, which can be printed if you um, buy the activity. There's actually three pages, they're all exactly the same. And there is a colored version, which is what I printed out because I have a color printer, but you can also do black and white. So teachers, you could just do black and white copies. And if so, students, you color them yourselves. That'll take a little bit of time. You also need scissors and tape, and then I would recommend the handout from underneath the video. So we'll get to the handout in just a minute, um, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and make our 3D model. Again, you should have three sheets of this, and the first step is just to cut out all of your pieces. I'm gonna demonstrate how to cut one of them. So you wanna, on each piece of paper, there's going to be four segments that you separate. They're the, the rectangles. You do not want to cut on the dotted lines. The dotted lines are places to fold, but not to cut. And so this is going to be one piece. And if you cut these out from all three papers, you're going to end up with 12 pieces total. And um, half of them will look like this, and the other half will have the purple and the yellow. Or if you've colored them, whatever colors you've selected. Okay, we now have 12 of these rectangles. That took me about four minutes. So my perfectionist, it's probably gonna take you 10 or something. And if you're a chit chatty perfectionist, it might take you even longer. Um, take all of these scraps and throw them away. You don't need them. So clean your work area, stand up, walk to the trash can and get rid of them. So all you have left is this, your scissors and your tape. Okay, so we have 12 of these. So now let's look at the handout. And there's a question on the handout that says, how many base pairs will we make in our DNA model? Each of these is a base pair. It will represent a base pair. So if you look at this, or if you count this, that's how many base pairs we're gonna make in this DNA strand. So let's think about how this is different from actual human DNA. If this has 12 bases, how many base pairs, 12 base pairs, how many base pairs do you think are inside of your DNA? Maybe you know, inside of your cells, in all the DNA. You have 70 trillion cells, give or take, they're really hard to count, inside of you. And every single one of them, almost, not the red blood cells, but everybody else pretty much has DNA. And that DNA is actually three billion letters long. So if we were to build that, imagine how long that would take. It's gonna take 45 minutes or so to build 12 base pairs. Three billion letters, three with nine zeros after it. If you were to type on your computer and you could type pretty fast, you could type every day for eight hours a day for 50 years to get that many letters. And if you filled up books with those letters, I don't know who would want to read these books, but A, C, G, T, T, G, C, T, J, A, whatever, it would fill about 5,000 books with just the DNA code to make you, just you. And that fits inside your cells, which are so small you can't see them with the naked eye. Every single cell, 70 trillion cells approximately. That's pretty mind blowing, I think. Okay, so let's move on to our model. So the next step is we're gonna fold each one of these in half. And when you fold them in half, you're folding them so that the white part is on the inside and they're identical on one side and the other. So this is just done so that any way we turn our origami DNA, 
we're going to get to see the letters, the words, the, the colors and everything. Okay, so about three minutes later, we have our 12 base pairs now neatly folded so that we just see color on the outside. And the next step is that we're going to fold again. So origami, lots of folding. Now what you want to do is each piece, you're going to fold it so that it's like a Z. So kind of just like that. And this is on your paper. There's a picture of it and it says the picture below represents a base pair. And list the different base pairs that occur within DNA. So if you look at all your rectangles, what you should notice is even though you have 12 of them, there are only two different kinds. There are only two possible base pairs. And those base pairs are guanine to cytosine is one, so so far I've been folding those, or thymine to adenine. And those are the only options because adenine can only pair with thymine and guanine can only pair with cytosine. And that has to do with the chemicals, the structures that make them up, and the way that they bond. So now look at the next part of the handout where it says highlight the hydrogen bonds. Well the hydrogen bonds on the handout are shown as lines and you can see in the top part of the handout we see a T to an A and you see between the T and the A that there are two lines and if you look right here between the T and the A there are two lines. Those are the hydrogen bonds. So thymine and adenine always pair with a double hydrogen bond. But that's different from guanine and cytosine. If you look at your paper, you'll see three lines between them. And if you look at this, you'll see three lines. That's a triple hydrogen bond. So base pairs always connect with hydrogen bonds, but there's a difference of a double or a triple pair. So go ahead and make all your base pairs, get them all folded, just like um, you're seeing me doing. So we now have our 12 beautiful base pairs folded and ready to go. And let's look at the differences between these bases. So we already know how they pair, but look at the structural differences. Notice how adenine has two rings. It's a double ringed base and guanine also has two rings. So they're both double ringed bases. These are called purines. And it's just because of the structural similarities. They're classified together because they're both double ringed. Then look at cytosine and thymine. Cytosine and thymine are each a single ring. And so those are known as pyrimidines. And the rule is that a purine always goes with a pyrimidine and a pyrimidine always goes with a purine. For the next part of the assembly, you're just going to start connecting these like a ladder. So here's where we start taping. And what I found helpful is to tear off a piece of tape and then tear the piece of tape in half like that. And each sugar is going to connect to a phosphate like so. Do not worry at all about the order. You could just do this with your eyes shut, flip them all around because the order of nucleotides is different from organism to organism. And even in you and I, part of what makes us different is the difference in the order of the nucleotides. So as long as you have the bases paired correctly, which we already did, the order of the adenine, cytosine, guanine, etc., does not matter at all. So just start matching these up like a ladder and putting them together. Okay, the next thing I did, and I apologize, I thought it was recording, but it was not, is everywhere there's a sugar and a phosphate, I just folded right there to make them stick out like so. And that's going to help uh, with when we go to twist it. Then I turned it this way, and I did the same thing, but before I taped this part together, I just folded every sugar phosphate bond, and now I'm going to tape 
each sugar on this side to each phosphate on this side. Hopefully you now have a beautiful piece of DNA and you can twist it into its double helix shape. There's a little bit more to talk about in terms of the DNA. So there's a very important part to DNA which is called the nucleotide. And we started with all of those nucleotides attached to each other. So I kept talking about base pairs and we had 12 base pairs, but what are they pairs of? And what they're pairs of is nucleotides. So if you were to cut it apart, which you shouldn't do because you just did all that work, um, you would get 24 of these little nucleotides. And the nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA. They're the monomer that makes up the polymer of DNA. If you look at them, they're identical in that they each have a phosphate. They each have a deoxyribose sugar, which is where the D in DNA gets its name. And they each have a base. This is called a nitrogenous base. It's either cytosine, guanine, adenine, or thymine. So each nucleotide is identical, except its base might be different from the next nucleotide. So you need to write that on your paper in the box where it asks what the picture represents. And you need to make sure that you learn the three parts of a nucleotide, the sugar, the phosphate, and the base. That's really, really important. The last thing I wanna talk about is what's next to it. So you see this sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate forever, three billion times, okay? And that's called the backbone. So every DNA strand has a backbone on each side and the backbone is always sugar phosphate. Now, between me and you, there are some differences in the bases. Between me and a mushroom, there are a lot of differences in the bases. But what's never different for any living thing is the backbone. It always goes sugar phosphate. It's identical. It's boring. Um, and so that's important to understand. The other thing that you should know about the back backbone is that the phosphate has a negative charge. It's PO43 minus, and every single one of them is negatively charged, and they're all along the strand of DNA. And that's important because that means DNA has a negative charge. And if you're one of my students, you better write that down, that the backbone has a negative charge because of phosphate. That's super important when we start learning about DNA gel electrophoresis and other aspects of DNA and how we manipulate it, because its charge really affects all of its properties. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'm really hoping that making your origami DNA was fun and helped you better understand the structure of DNA. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day.